Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis, Tuesday, September 9, 2014. This is the daily chart of the SPY, and what do you know, we had our turn within the turn window. What a shocker. So here, you basically came down into the 20 moving average and then bounced a little bit. However, um... Barring some wacky thing tomorrow morning, there should be more downside, but I don't know for how long on this particular move. Now, <clears throat> there's a chance that we can take a quick dip down to uh, around the 195 level, okay, uh, and the SPY, figure 1950, give or take on the uh, S&P 500, and um, I don't I don't know that this will happen all in one day, but uh, you may see a significant bounce off this level. And remember, the one thing working against the bear case right now for the next, let's say, week and a half is two things. Primarily, you have the Alibaba IPO that I discussed last night and with the amount of money at stake. The, in, the big institutions, the investment banks, the Credit Suisses, the Deutsche Banks, the Goldman Sachs and company, those are the three big ones in the majority of the IPO. Um, those guys aren't going to let the market go down so fast, allowing Alibaba to get scared away and cancel the uh, or postpone the IPO due to quote unquote market conditions. Okay, because if the market's headed down, all right, the demand for the IPO dries up and they can't get the type of price they want and therefore the company ends up getting less money in the public market so they'd rather wait. You know, what would you rather do if you're Alibaba? Take, as it stands now, they would get about $20 billion, okay? For the, the, the piece that they're selling to the public is worth $20 billion. That's not what the company's worth. The company's worth like a lot more than that. I don't I don't know exactly what it is, but it's in the you know, the couple of hundred billion dollar valuation based on this number, okay? And what would happen is, let's say the, the, some of the demand dries up because the market's going down and people are losing money and therefore they get scared away and they don't think they're going to get a pop out of the IPO and that's the main reason why people buy it, right? They want the pop, they think it's going to go straight up and what happens is they'll end up getting less and so they may get 15 or 16 billion for the same amount of shares being sold. Well, they don't want that. They want the full the full Monty, right? They want the twenty twenty one billion dollars. So they're gonna keep this market up if they can. That's the point. The other thing is options expiration, which is uh not this Friday, but the following Friday. And it's on the same day as the Alibaba IPO. So if you couple those two things together, uh next week you'll have a lot of game playing, you'll have a lot of whipsaw in the market during options expiration week. So you may see some further downside this week, but you may not see a full-on uh, sell signal uh, all the way down to, you know, at least test this double bottom here. Uh, you may not see that right away. Okay, so I just need you to be aware of that. Uh, there's going to be stops along the way, but there's going to be a significant bounce around the 194.5, 195 level. Okay, uh, you see this big red bar? That's going to provide a lot of level of uh, resistance here, okay? Once we broke out above that, that this big red bar and we made new highs, okay, once we come back into this level and pierce it a little bit, that's going to be a high level of support. And that's why I say that. Okay. One of the things to, that is probably being blamed for the sell-off today, and I didn't hear this directly, but I'm sure they're talking about it, uh, is Apple, right? Apple was the big Mac Daddy announcement today, all the hype. Let's take a look at Apple. All right, all the hype. And here's what happened. See, this is one of those things where you take a look at other stuff to find out what's happening happening in the market. And it's not always the same stuff, but you have to look for signals, right? We let the market tell us what to do. Well, here's a signal. All right, what did Apple do today? Here's a daily chart of Apple. All right, we'll look at the daily and then we'll look at the intraday, which is more dramatic. Apple had their big announcement today of a new phone and a watch and some other stuff. It doesn't really matter. There, there's no revolution in phones these days. The phone is a commodity still. It's what we can do with the phone that makes a difference to us as consumers. That's my opinion anyway. Until some new revolutionary phone comes out 
that can do stuff or or that that functions in a way that far surpasses the phones today um, until that happens they're not going to get an enormous jump on a new phone right the new phone has a bigger screen well so what they finally caught up with uh, some of the other manufacturers on the Android system that have big screens right so so now they're they're just playing catch up but nevertheless Apple's a great company they make fabulous products and they deserve you know to be an expensive stock um, as long as they keep selling you know hundreds of millions hundreds of billions of dollars worth of merchandise right so and then that's the case so all I'm saying is let's look at the price action of Apple so the price action of the stock forget the company okay forget the products just look at the price action of the stock we went up today after the announcement right they drove the market higher right into this double top from this big red bar sell-off from I think it was the third right the third of September okay this was the high of the third we went back and we tested this and we failed and it went back down and guess what that's not healthy this is a bearish pattern we tested it and failed right away and it wasn't even close now let's look at the 60 minute we'll look at the hourly chart okay here you go you chopped around all day when when midday hit and the announcement was coming of their new products and the the, the performance was beginning okay the stock started to pop and then you had huge volume okay first of all you had a hundred and like eighty million shares traded on Apple today just this one candle alone okay the one that spiked all the way up was fifty five million shares spikes up fails comes all the way back down okay that is not healthy for Apple. You came back down to 96, what was the low? 14, 96, 14, and then bounced up and then finished uh, weak again. So, you know, let's just look at the 10 minute. It's even more dramatic. Uh, look at this. That's just a terrible, terrible performance on the chart. And that's telling you Apple wants to go lower. But how much lower? Let's go back to the daily chart. Now, here's the thing. All right. Actually, this is 60 minute. Actually, you know, there may not be all that more downside before you get a significant bounce in Apple because look where you are. You're at this this breakout here and a lot of times a market will like to come in and they'll get defended. A stock will get defended right at this breakout point, okay, because a lot of people, a lot of institutions, hedge funds and whatnot got long here, okay, they sent the market up, so they're going to defend it at their break even point, right? So we'll see what happens if it breaks 95 considerably, okay, uh, and it comes and takes out this pivot low at 93.28, which is a pretty long way off from here. That that would be a big sell-off. Uh, then, you know, then I don't know what to tell you. Then you're probably going to test this 200 moving average relatively quickly. But I wouldn't count on that anytime soon. I think Apple will be defended, so I think you can actually get a bounce on the long side on a break in 95 and if you put a, uh, a close stop in um, you know we'll see what happens may take that one for the members I'll let them know if we take the trade and what the stock would be and what the level to buy would be so let's take a look at another um, market signal today I'm gonna look at Amazon can't talk and type talking and typing talking and typing all right here we go so Amazon had a terrible day again uh, Amazon, not again, but Amazon had a terrible day. Uh, basically, I think the discussion now is, you know, a lot of uh, the large institutional holders are getting tired of waiting for the Amazon profit story to take hold. They came out with this phone a couple of months ago, and it was a flop, right? Nobody has the phone. Forget about what the media is telling you. Forget about what the analysts are telling you. All you have to do is look in crowds of people and find somebody that has the Amazon phone. You can't. Nobody has it. Nobody wants it. They're not going to sell phones. Okay? So what that's telling you is they're wasting money, and they don't make any profit now as it is. So I think what's happening is you're getting some exhaustion in waiting for Amazon to turn on the profit spigot like everybody thought they would. And there's a lot of pressure in Amazon. And let's look at a longer-term chart, okay? Forget the, the intraday chart. That was ugly. Let's look at a longer-term chart, okay? Amazon made a high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Guess what? The stock's going down to test maybe even to 200 moving average. At the bare minimum, it's coming down to this pivot low here at uh, 
280. We'll call it 285. It's 284, 38. Uh, it, it's 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 destined for that spot. I think that's my opinion. You'll have some support in here at 300. Okay, even number, and uh, it's a big psychological level. But uh, my uh, my book tells me uh, that Amazon's coming down at 285. All right, so let's go over and we'll just quickly touch on the gold market. Uh, gold is still hanging in there. It's not strong, but it's hanging in. It made another low today, but it's hanging in there, and we'll see what happens. Um, we're in a window where gold should start to move higher. And if it doesn't move higher, there's something terribly wrong, and it's going to go a lot lower. So we're keeping our eye on gold. GDX, I said that the inverse head and shoulders had been breached, and it, it's, it's getting defended. It's not back above it yet, but it's getting defended. Here's the weekly chart. Let's look at the daily chart. We had an up move in GDX today. Okay, they're defending the 200 moving average on the daily chart. All right, and so we'll see what happens in GDX. If it can close back above uh, the, the inverse head and shoulders by Friday, uh, that's a good sign, and that's a sign of higher prices. Um, I think uh, that's a bit it. I think we're going to focus mainly on the market right now, and uh, we'll have an update, obviously, tomorrow night. But uh, looks like there's some downside pressure ahead in the uh, in the major markets, and we'll see where it takes us. We'll play it one day at a time, let the market tell us what to do. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in, folks.